So, so today we will cover off the Atari shelf. Let's see what's on it, um, how it's set up now. First of all, I just want to uh, reiterate again, for those who saw the, the first episode, Atari is very special for me. You know, it's, it's really where I grew up and first experienced arcade games uh, of the good old trusty VCS, which I have sitting down here on the floor, an old six switcher, quite dusty in fact, it's a good clean. Uh, but the old six switches they had on here, they changed them to four and there was a black one for a Darth Vader version. But anyway, this was the, the good old trusty box that I had when I first uh, started playing games. And, and wow, well, what some fond memories, you know, playing Spaceys for the first time on here after seeing it in the arcades. Uh, it was a crazy, crazy time. It was all new technology. You know, the graphics are so simple. Gameplay was fantastic and a lot of fun times. So that's where it all started. Now, what else do we have on the shelf? Well, stack of software. So this was some of the first software that came out for the Atari 800 and 400 computers. I have an 800. I progressed from the, uh, the Atari VCS or the 2600 to the Atari 800 and then started getting a lot of these games. Now, these are all uh, games that I've since recollected. As you can see, this one's completely shrink wrapped. So they're not the original ones I had because a lot of those got lost uh, when, I, when I moved. I do actually have my original Atari though. Um, I did manage to get that over here, but a lot of the software I've since recollected. But anyway, these were these were the cool big black boxes and they were quite basic. They all look very similar um, in terms of the initial software that was released. They took up a lot of shelf space. I mean, <laughs> we've got a little cartridge in here that's really tiny and uh, they're sort of sitting in there with a big, uh, big manual behind the back of it but they really stood out and I guess there wasn't a lot of software originally so they wanted to sort of fill, fill the shelves up they did get smaller after that which I've got down so that's pretty cool now tucked away to the side is a very special game not the Space Invaders record mind you <laughs> Space... there was a couple of these actually really corny music maybe I oh, actually I probably can't play it because of copyright laws but um yeah there was another one the Pac-Man the Pac-Man uh music one that's a shocker anyway that's that. This is what I want to talk about. Mule. Mule. Awesome game. Awesome strategy game. I want to do an episode on that, but here's an original, and these are expensive, actually. But they had cool, cool art in here. They had all the programmers, um, details on, the, on, on each of the programmers, which was pretty cool. The original disc there. So the top here, what do we got? Well, this is a bit of bizarre. This is the Atari video music system which really just played a lot of graphics. You put your music through it and it'll play some fancy graphics on the screen. Pretty cool for its day. And it's slotted in like a hi-fi uh, type of box. Very unusual. Anyway, let's go back to the shelf. What else we got up here? Um, gosh, you know what this is? Here's a trick for you. What is this? Do you know? It's a disc notcher. We used to do for the old floppy disks. If you wanted to write to the other side of the disc, then you had to actually take this notch out because that's what actually determined if you could write, you know, write to the disc or not. So you use a special little fandangle thing, and you'd put the uh, put the disc in, and then click it, and then it would take a chunk out of there, and you'd be able to write to it. <laughs> you know what that is now? Okay, so what else do we have here? Well, this is cool. This is some nostalgia right here, and geez, it's dusty too. <laughs> Needs a clean. My goodness. Look, it's come straight out of the arc. Look at the dust on that. What is this? It's an old acoustic modem. 300 board modem. 300 board. That is so slow. So you would put a phone, which used to be like this, of course. These are the old handsets. And you put it on the top, like so. It would fit a little bit better, a real one. And it would actually play the data, you know, through the telephone line, through normal audio. Uh, through into the acoustic modem at 300 board or 300 bits per second and of course you'd be susceptible to line noise and people picking up the other line and uh, it would make it drop out but you know this is this was the first this is cool man this is the first part of you know communications you know consumer communications that led towards you know connecting up to bulletin board systems and then eventually through to the uh, to the internet so that's awesome Else we're up the top here. We don't have this is not an Atari thing, but so the old Galaxy uh, Invader 1000. God, I spent a lot of time playing that thing. Oh, Space Invaders handheld little unit. Got the box for that. I've got a right up the back there. Can you see it? Oh, you can see that there. Right at the back there is the uh, 
original box for the VCS. Can you believe I imported that from the US empty? <laughs> I so desperately wanted the box. I couldn't find one that was a unit with the box in it. I could only find, someone actually put up an empty box on, on eBay in the US and some schmuck bought it. Not my best purchase by any means. But anyway, I wanted the box and I have it. Now the other thing up here is we've got a share certificate. This is hardcore Atari collecting right here. 50,000 shares of Atari Corporation. We have some original paddle controllers uh, and the stick controllers, which were, which were the staple controller back in the day and uh, got the original boxes for those. I think one little cool thing here is this uh, laser blast, which was on the VCS. Um, one of my favorite games and you can see here, it's got a little sort of badge that I actually won from um, submitting a score over over a million. So you've got this little thing here for a million and you had to send in a photo, take a, take a real photo, wait for it to get developed, you know, seven days later and uh, send the photo in and then they would look at it and then they would send you out a badge if you got over a million points. So I used to be really good at this game. I did try it the other day and actually I was crap. So um, I don't know what's happened since then and now. Maybe I should try it again. Maybe we'll do another episode and I'll see if I can. Do you think I could try and break a million? I don't know how long that took me. So I think that's the, the top shelf done. Well, we're right in the middle here. You can see that I've got a lot of the VCS titles here boxed. And you know what? I don't know if, if you guys remember, but in the old magazines, for, for those of you that were around in, in you know, the old compute magazines, they used to advertise the Atari VCS. And every, and every advertisement would have the whole stack of games and they'd be in, in this sort of colour, you know, um, uh, range or, or the way that they were organised and stacked. I always used to think that was awesome. I always wish, used to wish, can I get all those games? So I started collecting them. There's more behind the back there, actually. So I've, I've almost got the full set. You know, the graphics are so basic on those guys, but it's just sensational gameplay. And of course, at the time, it was so groundbreaking. You know, we were used to playing board games. It was Monopoly every Saturday, you know. Um, as soon as we got electronic games, it was, wow, a whole new new frontier. Well, a few things here. I've got the Atari 800 <coughs> machine here, which is covered up. We might as well get rid of this, take these covers off. You can see the original Atari there and the Atari 810 disk drive. Uh, what else have we got down the bottom here? Well, there's just a stack of uh, other hardware. We've got the, the old uh, CX-85. Atari keypad. Uh, here's some of the some of the smaller box Atari stuff. Right down the bottom here. I still like these these little case holders. Sit them on the on the shelf. You put all your uh, all your cartridges in there. And these grey ones. So I'll be careful. They probably all fall out of there. And that's about it, really. I've got some man the original manuals and. Uh, other documentation on the on the 800 down the bottom here, some learn Italian and Spanish and stuff through the the little tape player that you used to hook up because before the disk drive, of course, you had to load games uh, through the the tape drive, which used to take forever and was prone to erroring out while you loaded them. You had to reload them, um, took forever. But anyway, it was great when the disk drives finally came along. So listen, that's the. Um, that's about all, much, all I've got to say really for the Atari shelf. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope there was something there of interest. Uh, please leave uh, some comments below and uh, like and subscribe if you want to follow. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, ciao for now.